Good morning prep for this video is for Tuesday's maths lesson um, where we are going to be continuing our learning from yesterday um, where we looked at grid multiplication. So to start with today the first learning reminder um, is giving you one, two, three, four four number sentences, um, all three digits multiplied by one digit. Um, and there's a couple of questions here um, which are asking which of these will have the biggest answer. And so it's asking you to estimate what your answer is going to be before you go about um, using the grid method to find um, what the actual accurate answers might be. And in order to make good estimations, um, using rounding of the three digit number to estimate. So have a go first of all at rounding each of these three digit numbers. I think we will go to the nearest 100. So we have 376 rounded to the nearest 100 would be 319 rounded to the nearest 100 would be 482 and 407. I'll give you a couple of seconds to have a think about that. Well done if you said 400 for this one. Well done if you said 300 for this one. So sorry, the first one we were rounding up to 400. This one we were rounding down to 300. 482, we round up to 500, and 407, we round down to 400. So using these new rounded numbers, it enables you to give a really good estima estimation for the number sentences. So the first one, it would be 6 multiplied by 400. 6 multiplied by 400. Use your smile method if you can. 6 multiplied by 4 is, well done if you said 24. Two place value holders means we multiply our answer by 100. So that would be our estimation for this one. 319, we know it's rounded to 300 multiplied by 5. 300 multiplied by 5. Some of you might be able to do these in your head. Some of you will need to work them out. Um, using a pencil and paper, that's not a problem. Three times five is 15. Two place value holders like before. That was our estimation. Three multiplied by 482, and we've rounded that to 500. So 500 multiplied by three. Okay, we've just done three times five. This is the other way around, still going to generate the same answer there with our place value holders 1500 and finally 407 multiplied by 4 but it's 400 multiplied by 4 4 multiplied by 4 is 16 two place value holders multiplies by 100 which gives us the answer of 1600 so these are our estimations okay so with these in mind I would say that the first one, because it generates the largest answer, um, although it is an estimation, that's what I would say would have the biggest answer. So, um, which of these could you do without using a written method? Some of you might feel confident in not using a written method for these, but I would recommend at this stage um, to do so. So, have a go at working out the actual answers to all of these using the grid method. So I'm going to do the first one um, and I'm going to show you the other three. Um, I would like you to have a go at home. You can pause the videos um, and you can check and see how close to the estimates we were. So six multiplied by 376. First of all, I need to partition 376 like this into my ones, into my tens, and into my hundreds. Well done if you got seven, um, 370 and six. And I then need to pop these into the grid. So this is my grid, a little bit wonky, but that's okay. 
hopefully you'll be able to use your squares in your books. So we're multiplying by six. So my six goes here and my 300, my 70 and my six go here. So first of all, six multiplied by 300. I know that six multiplied by three is 18. Two place value holders gives us that answer. Six multiplied by seven. Well, I know six, six is a 36. So six sevens must be 42. One place value holder, multiply my answer by 10. And finally, oh, here we go again. My favorite multiplication, six sixes are 36. So here I have my three answers. Um, now to generate my final answer, I need to add these three together being very, very careful to make sure that my place values are in line. So 1,800, 420, and you can see I've started with my, my ones column to make sure they're perfectly in line, and 36. Okay, put my add sign there. So we have six, we have five, we have 12, one and one, and we have two. So my final answer is 2,256, which isn't far off my estimation here from my rounded method. Um, so have a go at the other three, see how close they are um, to the estimations. It's good practice. Okay, we have done a fair amount of work on that one. If you want to work through this learning reminder, which is looking at comparing your answers to your estimations, um, you can do. But the task today, um, similar to yesterday, in that we have got lots of number sentences that I think that the easiest option again is to do this in your book. However, before you start today, which multiplication do you think will have the smallest answer and which will have the biggest answer? So this is before you do any calculations whatsoever. I would like you to look at the number sentences and this applies to both the mild and the hot sheets. And I would like you to think about using some estimation tactics like we did at the beginning of the video, which one is going to have the biggest answer and which is going to have the smallest answer. Then using the grid method, calculate your answers to each of these. See if you were right, see if your estimate was correct. So that's the same for both of these. And there is a couple of challenges here. Um, there is a oh, so some answers for you to self mark. There is a bit a bit stuck grid luck sheet. Read through those. Please do this with an adult. And there is some print offs which you can easily replicate um, in in your maths books. There's just some grids here for you to have a go at. And then the final part of the lesson is an investigation called roots. And it's using digital roots, which is something that we have touched on. Um, and in order to be able to complete this investigation, you need to know how to find a digital root. And how you find a digital root is like this. Well, the example is here, to, here as well. So you will need to generate a three digit number. So you could choose your own three digit number. I haven't got my nine sided dice. So I've just got six sided ones. So I'm just going to roll that three times. Five. Let's make a note of that. Five, can you see that? Yep, four and five, five, four, five. So to generate a digital root, you add the digits together. So five and four and five equals 14. Now you keep adding your digits together until you get a single digit number. So I haven't got a single digit number, I've got 14. So again, I add these digits together. One add four equals five. That's giving me my digital root, okay? So I've added my digital root to my three digit number and it's then asking you to, to put it into a number sentence with multiplying it by a one digit number. So I'll roll the dice again, four. Oh, is that on screen? Doo, doo, doo. Yep, um, gosh, my dice obviously likes fives and fours. So my number sentence is 545 multiplied by four. Now I know that that is my digital root. 
um, so far. So we have next it's asking us to multiply it by your chosen one digit number and find the digital root of the answer. So I have five multiplied by four. So I'll do this over here. Five multiplied by four equals 20. Um, and the digital root of 22 and zero is two. Okay, that is the important one, two. Then what I'm going to do is, using the grid method, work out the answer to this number sentence. And then I will work out the digital root of my answer. And I hope that it's going to be two. And we'll see if it works. There is another example right here as well. So 545 multiplied by four. Let's make our grid. A little bit wonky. This is the bonus of home learning because I'm not asking you to use rulers like I would in school. Obviously, it's good if you do have a ruler and, and use it. That is excellent practice. So well done if you are. Um, here we go. 545 partitioned. 500, 40, and 5, multiplying all of these by 4. So first of all, 4 multiplied by 5 is 20. Two place value holders it gives us an answer of 2,000. 4 multiplied by 4 is 16. One place value holder. 4 multiplied by 5 is 20. And then I'm going to add all these together. If you can mentally in your head, excellent. If you need to use the column addition, that's also fine. But I know that 2,000... Um, my answer will be 2,180, so 2,180. Okay, now I'm going to find the digital root for this number, which means adding all of the digits together. So two, add one, add eight, add zero is 11. That's not a two digit, that's not, sorry, a one digit number. I'm going to have to do it again. One add one is two. They match, the theory works. Okay, uh, find your own number sentence with a three digit number multiplied by a one digit number and give it a go. And then if it works, give it another go. Are there any exceptions to the rule? I'd be interested to know. Enjoy the lesson today.